startling fulfillment down through the centuries, people from around the world believe in Bible prophecy. And from God's viewpoint, the next great world event is just around the corner. Millions will suddenly disappear from planet Earth. Now you can find out what it's all about. Join Pastor John Osteen for Jesus is Coming Soon, a fascinating series of messages on the reality of Bible prophecy. It's closer than you think. The John Osteen program is closed captioned for the hearing impaired. In this hurting world, we all need answers. Though the world is constantly changing, God's wisdom is the constant solution. I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. We're a family church made up of people of all denominations, races, and walks of life. We've dedicated our lives to bringing the compassion of Jesus Christ into every person's world. And after many years, we've developed a reputation for helping those who have been overcome to be overcomers. Your dreams and desires are important to God and to us. We want God's best for you. Join with me the next 30 minutes and discover the life-changing power of God's Word. For over 54 years, John Osteen has touched the lives of individuals around the world. Founder and pastor of Lakewood Church, an international training center, teaching people to use God's Word to overcome life's everyday challenges. A local church with a worldwide vision, Lakewood is dedicated to helping hurting people in America and in over 100 nations of the world. Don't miss the next 30 minutes with Pastor John and Dodie Osteen at the Oasis of Love, a place where miracles happen and lives are changed. One of the things we love to do here at Lakewood Church is to look back on the colorful history of our church. God called my mom and dad to begin this ministry in a feed store, and ever since that humble beginning, the church has grown in miraculous ways. And now, thanks to the grace of God, it's touching lives around the world. And every once in a while, we like to get together with all the folks that remember those early days and recall the many ways that God has blessed and touched our lives. So recently, my mom and dad and many of their closest friends who were here during those early days met to look at pictures, to reminisce, and to worship and praise God for His goodness. At Lakewood, we enjoy our past because it reminds us that God still works miracles, and He gives us even greater hope for our future. And God wants to work a miracle in your life, too. So as you listen to today's message, remember that your life can change as you surrender your future to Him. But right now, let's go into the main sanctuary and join my dad, Pastor John Osteen, here at Lakewood Church, the Oasis of Love. I want to welcome you today to the program. We know you have a choice. We are always so delighted at the good reports we get about your viewing the telecast. And you know you still have time, if you watch this Sunday morning, to get ready and come to Lakewood Church. We'll do you good and not evil. Amen. We want you to come over here. So get ready and come over here and we'll bless you. Amen. And I want to share this scripture with you. It says in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, but God's truth stands firm like a great rock and nothing can shake it. And then just above it, it says, know what his word says and what it means. Well, if you want God's truth to stand like a great rock so nothing can shake it, then you gotta know it. You gotta know what it says and you gotta just make up your mind that no matter what comes against you, no matter what happens to you, that God's word is unshakable, it cannot be moved. And if you stand on this word, then when it's all over, you'll still be standing. Amen. 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 Let's hold up our Bibles, wave them around a little bit, and let's make our confession. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive. The incorruptible, the incorruptible, indestructible, indestructible ever-living ever -living seed, seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto Him 
that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Every other translation says the day of the Lord. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That word falling away is also translated departure. So you can read it like that day shall not come except there be a departure first. And then the man of sin, the Antichrist, will be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he has God sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Now you know what withholdeth or hindereth that he might be revealed in his sign. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now hinders will hinder till he be taken out of the way. Then that wicked one shall be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God also shall send them strong delusion, that they might believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I have this typed out from the Greek Testament, New Testament, and I want to read it to you. This is exactly what the Holy Ghost said. You look up here and listen. Now I'm requesting you, brethren, with regard to the coming and personal presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, even our being assembled together with him, that don't be soon shaken or unsettled, neither be thrown into confusion, either by spirit, a believer in the Christian assembly claiming the authority of divine revelation and claiming to give a, the saints a word from God, or through a word as from us, or through a letter falsely alleged to be written by us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come and is now present. Do not begin to allow anyone to lead you astray in any way, because that day shall not come except the aforementioned departure of the church to heaven comes first. And then the man of lawlessness is disclosed, the son of perdition, he who sets himself in opposition to and exalts himself above everyone and everything that is called God or that is an object of worship. He seats himself in the inner sanctuary of God, proclaiming himself to be deity. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I kept telling you these things? Now you know with a positive assurance that that which is preventing his being disclosed in his strategic time, appointed time, for the mystery of the aforementioned lawlessness is now operating. Only he, the Holy Spirit, who is holding him down, will hold him down until he is taken out of the midst. And then shall that lawless one be disclosed, whom the Lord shall slay with the breath of his mouth and render inoperative by the sundering, his sudden appearance and his personal presence. The coming and presence of whom is according to the operation of Satan. Now notice, in the sphere of miracles, demonstrating power and attesting miracles, and miracles of a startling, imposing, amazing, awakening character which deceive and whose coming and presence is of the sphere of every kind of wicked deception. And because of this, God will send strong delusion that all that they would believe a lie who had pleasure in unrighteousness and did not believe the truth. Now, I wanted to get that into your thinking before I begin the message. We're preaching the final message on this subject. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Can I have a better amen? amen? Now, the Bible says that we ought to know the signs of our times. I don't believe the church ought to be in ignorance. It's good to shout and jump and praise the Lord and kick up our heels, but it's good to sit still and learn truth. You not only need inspiration, you need information. 
And I said, oh, Jesus, I'm sitting in the church as a pastor, as a shepherd. I'm supposed to tell these people what's going to happen in the days ahead. You've got to show me. And I prayed and I sought the Lord. And I'll tell you, he gave me this series of messages. And I believe wherever you are as a member of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you've got some good news coming. And if you'll listen, you'll find good news in these messages. Now, we need to distinguish, as I've said again and again, between Jesus coming for the church and with the church. The Bible says, Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, you see, the rapture of the church and the catching away of the church has been a mystery hidden in God from the foundation of the world. Daniel didn't see it. Isaiah didn't see it. Ezekiel didn't see it. And Jesus didn't talk about it very much. He kept that revelation for Paul, uh, the apostle, to give in order that the church might understand the hope that they have. And he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. Could I have an amen? amen? In a moment, in an atomic second, in the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet shall sound, and we shall be changed. And this corruption must put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. Thank God he's coming back. The Bible says our citizenship is in heaven from which also we look for the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile bodies that they may be fashioned like unto his own glorious body by the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And then notice what the Bible says in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I would not have you ignorant brethren that's why I'm preaching this message to you. You ought not to be ignorant about what's about to come on this world. You ought not to be ignorant about the giant steps God has taken in this day. You ought not to be ignorant about the great dis, uh, dismantling of the Eastern Bloc and Russia and all of that. You ought not to be amazed at the great harvest that's coming in around the world. Don't be ignorant, brethren, concerning the, those that are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others sorrow that have, have no hope. For if we believe, say, I'm a believer. believer. Shout it out. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them that sleep in Jesus, those that died in Jesus, will God bring with him. Now notice, this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Paul said, I heard this from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I stood before him. I saw him. I heard him talk. This we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until his coming shall not prevent those who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, caught up, caught up, caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Bible says we'll be snatched away. Oh, you know, one day the party is going to be over for this world. They've made fun of the church. They've criticized Jesus. They've made fun of praying for the sick and casting out devils. They've had a heyday and a party. But one day, the party will be over. There won't be any church to make fun of. I'll tell you, suddenly we'll be gone. Suddenly, there will be nobody to witness about Jesus and to cast out devils. The ch they'll look for us, and the churches will be empty. The graveyards will be like plowed fields, and they'll look for mother, for daddy, for son, for daughter. But every born-again believer will have gone from this world in a moment of time. And let me tell you something, folks. Let me share this with you. Nothing in the world has to come to pass before he comes. He could come now. And I know they're kooks. They get on the hillside and wrap themselves in sheets, sell their, sell their property and deceive people and say Jesus is coming, and they give a date. Nobody knows the day of the hour. Jesus said, I don't even know myself, only the Father knows. So if some kook has dis disappointed you, remember that's the deception of the devil to keep you from really believing he's coming. Amen. I don't care how many kooks say he's going to come on a certain date and he doesn't show up. That doesn't mean he's not coming. Amen. He's coming. Amen. Jesus said, when you see all these things coming to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption draws nigh. 
the next great event for this world that would shake it, sudden there, there would be a disappearance of millions of people and they'll go from this world and the world won't know what happened. Now, somebody said, now who's going to go up in the rapture? Who's going to be caught away? Everybody who's born again. That's the reason we urge you don't get Jesus mixed up with religion. You got to have more than religion, you got to have reality. But if you are born again, you're part of the body of Christ. And let me tell you something, folks. Jesus is not going to be part of his body down here on earth. But somebody says, well, you know, you better be careful because he's not going to snatch away lukewarm Christians. Well, now, who's going to determine lukewarm? Someday, Dodie looks at me and says, hello, lukewarm. And many days, I look at her and say, what a beautiful woman I married. <laughs> See, you thought I was going to say something ugly, didn't you? These people here in Lakewood, they think I have a mean spirit. You know, you know, people are scared to death. Well, I, I don't know whether I'm going to make the rapture or not. I don't know whether I, I, I feel a little lukewarm today. Listen, religious laws and rules always judge people. And so people live in fear. Well, I'm a little lukewarm. And then there are those that say, well, Jesus is coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. And you sure look wrinkled. He's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. So you better be sure you're not lukewarm and you better be sure you don't have any spots or wrinkles. Let me tell you something. The blood of Jesus Christ takes out all spots and all wrinkles. If the blood can't do it, nothing else can. And we need to destroy fear in the body of Christ. We need to let you know whatever denomination you belong to or whether you belong to any church or not, if you belong to Jesus, if you're washed in his blood, made righteous by his righteousness, if you are born from above, I'll tell you, he's not going to leave you on this earth. I say, what if I feel a little backslidden? It's not how you feel, it's what he did for you. Did you ever read that? That wonderful scripture over there in the book of Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. We look at you through natural eyes. God looks at you through the eyes of Jesus. He looks at you through the blood of Jesus. And every wrinkle and every spot has been destroyed because you're not going to go to heaven about, uh, because you're so goody-goody on the outside. You're going to go to heaven because you've been made new on the inside. Yeah. The Bible says he was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The inner man has been made righteous in God's righteousness. And that's the only reason. Somebody said, told me one day, said, if you live for Jesus for 65 years, faithfully to Jesus, and then you sin one day, and you didn't get that out of your system, and Jesus came, you'd be left. I thought, what insane asylum did he go to for seminary? <laughs> God is a God of mercy. Listen to me, television audience. When Jesus comes back, there'll be mature Christians on the earth. There'll be immature Christians on the earth. There'll be carnal Christians on the earth. There'll be baby Christians on the earth. There'll be people who have, been made, have made mistakes galore, but they love Jesus. And we belong to his body. We're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And when he comes back to get the church, he's coming back for his body. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know that's what this is all about here. Somebody had circulated word that Jesus has come and these Thessalonians had been left. Oh, the day of the Lord's come. The wrath of God is upon us. The book of Revelation is going to be poured out now upon us and we're left. We're left. We've been left in the rapture of Jesus. And Paul said, now I want to straighten all that out. And he said, that day shall not come, notice, until there comes a departure. The day of the Lord is when God 
sends his judgment upon the earth. If you want to read about it, read in the book of Revelation. Awful, terrible, terrible things that are going to be poured out on this earth. The judgment of God will fall on this earth. I'm not happy about that, but it's the truth. But you see, during that time, the man of sin, the Antichrist, is going to rise. And the Bible says he's the son of perdition. He sets himself up as God. And notice, now I want you to listen to this. He has tremendous earth-shaking signs, wonders, and miracles. And the whole world is deceived by that. Listen to me. The world has made fun of miracles in our day. The world has criticized us for saying people got healed today. They've made fun of signs and wonders and miracles from the hands of Jesus and laughed us to scorn. But one day when the church here leaves this world, that man of sin will perform signs and wonders and miracles and they will believe his signs and they will believe his miracles and they will perish. Amen. He's going to cause all, small and great, to take a mark in their forehead or in their right hand. You know right now, they can put a chip underneath your skin right there and they can know all your history, everything about you. They can just read it with a machine just like that. So we're headed that direction. We're headed to where there's going to be a one world situation here and he's going to rise up and he's going to be the Antichrist. But I'll tell you, the Bible says before he can be identified and rise up, the church has got to depart. Now, the world at church will still be here. Oh, that bunch that says everybody's going to be saved. Don't worry about death. Everybody goes to the same place. You may come back as a butterfly. You may come back as a cockroach. You may come back as Aunt Mary. Oh, don't fear death. Everybody's going to be saved. That bunch is going to stay here. They're going to stay here. That Antichrist will rise and rule. And you'll have to have a mark in your forehead or in your hand in order to buy and sell. But before he can come, there has to be a departure. The Bible says, only he who now hinders will hinder. You know, the church empowered by the Holy Ghost is the hindering force against the floodgates of evil. Satan can't let it all hang out yet. He's doing his best and a lot's hanging out. But there's a force that keeps him from letting it all flood the human race. He who now hinders will hinder till he be taken out of the way. And that hindering force is the church of the living God filled with the Spirit of God. It's people like you right here who care. Oh, yes, there's pornography, there's loose living and all kind of strange creatures living together and all of that and, and all of the, uh, the lewdness and all of that and the looseness in morals. It's there, but there is a restraining force. Every church throughout all of this land and throughout the world, wherever this goes, every church is a lighthouse. It's a restraining force. Thank God for churches. But one day, the church, every born-again believer, will leave this earth. Then there will be no restraining power. Then the floodgates of evil will rise. The book of Revelation says those who, who committed adultery and those who were fearful and those who had abominations and those who uh, dealt in sorcery and those who had all of these things repented not but cursed God. There's no restraint now. The church is gone. After that great tribulation, Jesus is going to come back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who know not God. He'll come back with all of his saints and we'll help him judge the world. But thank God we're not in the dark. We know the next great event in the history of the human race is the snatching, catching away of the church of the living God. And it could happen today. You say, what would happen if it happened right now? The graveyards would burst open and every body of every person who's born again would rise out of those graves and you and I suddenly will feel exhilarated and we'd rise in the air, transformed by the power of God. What a day. 
It's a day when you should be sure that you're born again. Not just religious, but born again. You know, there are things, you know, if you say, well, I was born again at age, age five or six or 10 or 12, and you've never been in church, you never served God, I wouldn't think I was born again. There are certain things that go along with being born again. I mean, you want to go to church, you want to serve God, you want to live for Him, you want to be around Christian people. What a day to make sure of our salvation. Then what a day to win our sons and daughters and our families to Jesus. What a day to send the gospel around the world. What a day to be sure that our friends know about Jesus. And what a day to straighten up our lives, to be able to give a good report when Jesus comes. Now, I don't want you to forget the fact that Jesus is coming soon. You say, well, how can I be born again? Pray this prayer. Say, oh God, I know I'm a sinner. Oh God, I'm tired of this way of life. Oh God, I want your son Jesus who died for me to come into my heart. Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. God raised you from the dead. You're the only savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord, be my savior. I want to be ready to live. I want to be ready to die. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are my Lord. I'll not be ashamed of you. I'll tell you about it wherever I go. Jesus is my Lord. Because you're not ashamed of him, he won't be ashamed of you in that day when you stand before the Father.